It's December, and we've got a lot of ground to cover, but we got a new contribution, so let's just dive right in. Hey everybody, it's Spooky's Avenger back with another Rags to Riches $500 five-year episode, and it's December 1st, so... Uh, that means <clears throat> it's contribution time for December. This will be our fourth out of 60 contributions, and we're already getting a 20% ROI. So let's go ahead and take a look at what uh, uh, what's shaken. So <clears throat> uh, CLIP, K-L-I-P, the Chinese ETF, that paid this morning, I think it was, or maybe late last night. Uh, that was about an $8 um, profit to start off the month. And then, of course, we had our $500 contribution, uh, the fourth again out of 60 total. And... I use 70% of that <clears throat> for dividend allocation and investment for passive income and stuff. So right now I'm just doing dividend stuff. So in the future, we'll be doing things like covered calls and, and other growth positions and things. But uh, for right now, we're just sticking with the passive income on dividends. Uh, so out of that $350, uh, I bought one Schwab at a $73. That was about 20.86% of the $350. Then I bought three shares of Ladder, L-A-D-R. It's one that I found on the screen in one of the previous episodes, and it's a beautiful stock. Um, <laughs> one of the Rags to Richards members also said, hey, by the way, that's got a dividend. That's a good dividend. And I didn't even look at the dividend, so uh, that was kind of embarrassing, but it was fun. Uh, I'm glad it has a dividend, and it makes sense. If it's a company that has that much financial strength, they want to take care of their shareholders, so it makes sense. Um, that was about 10% of the $350. That was a... Uh, I think like 1160 or something per share or something like that. Um, but I accidentally bought four, so I have an extra one. I'm taking that one share <clears throat> out of the speculative amount, so I'm not counting that towards this uh, this uh, this contribution, right? Uh, then I bought one share of JEPQ, uh, which was about forty nine dollars. That's fourteen percent of the three fifty. And then I bought uh, six shares of Clip. Um, even though they just paid, I want to get in early on the next dividend payment, and we took advantage of some of the the fall off today. Uh, from the dividend adjustment to get in nice and early using 28.57% of the investment allocation. And then <clears throat> I picked up another eight shares of Tesla. So that will be a pretty good payout on those two uh, next time they pay. So 26.57% of the investment allocation, which is $350, went towards Tesla. Um, and altogether, this provides me with a roughly 20% ROI uh, annually. So if I uh, if you look over here at the chart, you can see uh, let me just get my face out of the way. Now you can actually see it. Um, <laughs> HVT, that was the one that I was uh, kind of waiting for it to sell off. Um, and it did. So I bought it before the ex-div date. We, it was a special dividend, so they offered their $1 per share plus $0.30 cent regular dividend payment. That's going to be paid to me on December 13th. I can't do anything until then. Um, I was on a live stream this morning, and I had my sell order set, and it just sold as I was talking. Um, if I look down here at the 5-minute, you can kind of see it. Uh, pushed up, pulled down, pushed up, pulled down, and then it's just kind of hanging out. So I don't really care what it does after this. I just wanted to get that dividend payment um, and uh, a little bit of a profit on the share. So I did that. Mission accomplished. We can move on to the next. It's a 100% success rate on this trade. Uh, pretty easy. I didn't have to think about anything. Um, and Kim is the second position that I want to walk through. And that is more interesting because they offer a 20 uh, a 29 cent combined dividend, so 20 cent quarterly dividend, uh, plus 9 cent per share special dividend paid out on December 21st, and we racked up more than that today just by capitalizing on the PL. So, two outcomes, right? I know that on or before December 6th, I can, or I'm sorry, on or after December 6th, I can sell the share and be eligible for the dividend payout of 29 cents on December 21st. That's three weeks from now. Um, or if I see that much profit, and then some early, I can reach into the future. Instead of having to wait till December 21st to get that money, I can reach into the future, pull that money back to today, get my capital freed up for those shares rather than having to hold them over the weekend into Monday the 6th, um, and I can get that money now. So that's what I did. I just I waited until it went over my expected profit level. It kept pushing, pushing, pushing. It started to pull back a little bit, and I locked it in. And that's all I had to do uh, for that share. So I racked up, instead of $0.29, cents, uh, I pulled in that 29 cents plus an additional 93 cents, so it's almost four times the <clears throat> uh, almost four times the uh, anticipated amount. So I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm going to start doing that more with these special dividends, the ones that go up, the ones that go down. Obviously, I have to recover and break even. 
Um, but it's just a mindset um, that I kind of want to share with everybody is if you have that future profit in front of you right now and you were perfectly okay just accepting that profit, why not just grab it? Lock it in, move on to the next trade, get your money back, uh, you know, get rid of the share, eliminate your risk exposure. It just makes sense, right? But we see people hold on to things hoping they'll keep running and, you know, that's just, it's just greed and it's never enough and it hurts. So don't do that to yourself if you can avoid it. Um, you know, uh, take a, take a safer approach. Now I can't legally tell you what to do, but I can share what I do and prove that it works. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's you, <laughs> you know, you're the one pushing all your buttons. So let's go ahead and look at, um, the way the math works out. So this was early, uh, November, I believe it was a, a annual income of 227.64 projected, um, which was nice. Right. And then we bumped our way up to, uh, I think it was like 254 or something like that, 256, um, with uh, a little bit later on. Okay, and then, yeah, 25274. Okay, and then after this month's contributions, we went from a 17.19% dividend yield or 17.31% uh, yield on cost with an annual ROI projection of 25274 up to a year-to-date income of 407.12 with an annual income of 365.29. So if I look at the, the same screen, uh, you'll see we went from 17.19% dividend yield to 20.19% dividend yield. And we went from 252.74 annual income to 366.06 annual income. And that is just because I bought a few extra shares um, in the intended positions that I plan to buy. And it's just December 1st. I'm done for the month. I don't have to look at these positions again unless I want to, right? <clears throat> so again, it's just a mindset shift. It's not, I don't have to look at these charts all day. I don't have to try to speculate and, you know, is this going to go up? Is this going to go down? Because these are all shares that I want to keep anyway. So if it goes down, I get a discount. If it goes up, I can always lock the profits as long as it goes over my five-year intended profit target. And we calculated that for SCHD uh, with three shares. So now I have to recalculate that. <laughs> uh, but my cost basis is now 71.43. My old cost basis um, was a little bit lower, but I did have to average up. Obviously, the price went up, and that's okay. You know, adding two winning positions is often good, uh, despite what you're taught <laughs> on YouTube. Um, so my original target here was $80.98 for that one share. Now I have two shares, so I have to recalculate that uh, using the, the calculation that I walked through on an early episode. Uh, basically, it's just figuring out what the overall dividend yield will be for those two shares at the end of five years and adding that to the current price. And that's my sell target. And then when the price gets up there, if it gets there before the five years, why not just lock the profits in just like I did with Kim? All right? So it's just have the right mindset and you can just speed this up and it's awesome. So the, the gap, the difference between <clears throat> expectations versus what we're given early in those situations is something that we can use to expedite the compounding growth process. So if you can figure out how to do that, uh, profits come in pretty quick and pretty aggressively. So uh, for example, uh, Tesla, right? Tesla is a high yield ETF that's benchmarked on Tesla with synthetic synthetic covered calls. Um, if I can make five years worth of profits in a shorter amount of time without having to keep buying more shares, I can absolutely just lock those profits, get my original investment back at least. And, you know, the difference is just extra profit. But if I plan to trade this account for five years and I got five years worth of uh, profits sitting in front of my face, why not just grab it, right? All right, so I know this is kind of a rushed video. I really don't have a lot of time today, but I wanted to walk through the dividend payments and schedule. So if we look here, Oops, I closed the window. That's okay. Give me one second. <laughs> Please stand by. Uh, if I pull this over here, you can see that I've got at least two dividend payouts per week, and that's kind of my goal for these special dividends combined with the uh, other dividends, and that's all I'm doing. So it's easy peasy. I just want that consistent income to compound, but of course it's quality over quantity. I don't just want to have a, a dividend payout every day because there is still the share of P&L to consider and capital occupation. So I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to have all my money tied up just to get a dividend payout every day. It's not worth it. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> like I said, it, there's a lot of gurus out here on YouTube, and a lot of them are just trying to pitch you something. They're trying to, or you know, they're they're trying to get you to do something they want you to do, um, without you questioning it, right? 
because you know if they show you a bunch of profits, I'm like, yeah, that's that's the way to do it. You're more likely to trust them and more likely to put your money where they are, right? I'm not doing that. This is not a sales pitch. There's no paid product behind this. I'm just trying to share some education. I do, however, encourage you to go out and get some education. And if that requires paying a product to consolidate that quest and um, you know compress those hours that you normally spend trying to learn all this stuff in a more organized way, it's worth it, right? It doesn't necessarily matter which paid product you work with. Um, it's just like, you know, which one is the most genuine, right? So which one has uh, community, which one has, you know, is, is make, uh, which one makes sense, right? So if you see education and something doesn't make sense and you ask a question and you get beat down, <laughs> that's not a good product, right? Um, so again, this, I'm not going to ever pitch you guys sales products and stuff like that. It's just not my jam. I'm not a sales guy. Uh, I just want you guys to find success and you can't find success if you're constantly chasing new strategies and, and, you know, blowing up your portfolios on spy zero days, hoping to make it big. So, uh, just be careful and understand that again, by taking an approach like this, rather than starting over every single month with $0 and just keep putting contributions in and losing them, we're starting every month with at least 70% of what we had the month before, right? And it's compounding, it's growing. Those numbers that I showed you before, that 336 or whatever it was, that does not include additional contributions. It doesn't include P&L, uh, so profits. It doesn't include the speculative trading and their profits. <clears throat> it doesn't include the tax leverages. It doesn't include any uh, surplus contributions, like if I have an odd job or something and I want to, like the website that I made. Um, it doesn't include increases in dividends. A lot of these dividends grow over time. And there's just a lot of factors that aren't represented by that flat projection, um, which is where we're, again, going to have a, a gap in expectations. It's going to be pretty awesome. So, uh, you know, just keep yourself safe, keep your money safe, and, you know, really scrutinize everything that you're shown. And if it makes sense, awesome. If it doesn't make sense, ask questions, even if it's me. Uh, I want each and every one of you to tear apart everything I say. And, uh, you know, that's how we start the conversation. So... Obviously, there was, this works for me. It may or may not work for you, but I'm showing you everything I'm doing so that you can at least see that it does work if you do it the way I do it. So I'm going to end this episode here. I appreciate you all hanging out, and I'm going to try to keep these shorter because I know the last one was like 24 minutes or something, uh, and I'm rambling now. So I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you all, and have a good weekend. Please be safe. Uh, it is winter time, so have fun, and goodbye.